The quaint seaside town of Seabrook was renowned for its picturesque views and delectable seafood, nestled along the coast. It boasted an array of restaurants offering the freshest catches from the ocean. However, there was one establishment that stood out among the rest, Sato's Sushi Bar. Run by the enigmatic chef Sato, the sushi bar had garnered a cult following for its exquisite culinary creations. Every night, patrons flocked to Sato's to indulge in his innovative sushi dishes, each one a masterpiece of flavor and presentation. As a food critic always on the lookout for the next culinary sensation, I had heard whispers of Sato's sushi bar and its legendary offerings. Intrigued, I made my way to Seabrook, eager to sample the acclaimed cuisine for myself. The moment I stepped into the dimly lit restaurant, I was enveloped by an atmosphere of mystery and anticipation. The air was heavy with the scent of seaweed and soy sauce, mingling with the sizzle of grills and murmurs of conversations. Taking a seat at the bar, I watched as Chef Sada worked his magic behind the counter, his hands moving with precision and grace as he crafted each sushi roll with care. With bated breath, I awaited my first taste of his renowned creations. The initial bite was unlike anything I had ever experienced before, a burst of flavors dancing on my tongue, leaving me craving more. Each subsequent dish only heightened my senses, the combination of textures and tastes sending me into a state of gastronomic ecstasy. However, as the night progressed, a subtle anise began to creep over me lurking beneath the surface of my culinary delight. Brushing it off as mere exhaustion, I continued to indulge in Chef Sato's offerings, unable to resist the allure of his cuisine. It wasn't until the final course arrived that my euphoria turned to dread. A delicate piece of sushi shimmered with an iridescent glow, seeming to beckon me closer. Against my better judgment, I took a bite, only to find the taste exploding in my mouth like a tidal wave of horror. The sushi was alive. At first, I couldn't believe what I was experiencing. The delicate piece wriggled on my tongue. Its slimy texture repulsing me, I spat it out. But it was too late the taste of decay lingered in my mouth, the flavor of death overwhelming my senses. Panicked, I stumbled to my feet, my heart pounding in my chest. The once inviting atmosphere of Sato's sushi bar now felt suffocating, oppressive as if the very walls were closing in around me. I rushed to the exit, the taste of the tainted sushi still burning in my mouth. But as I reached for the door, I hesitated. What if this wasn't just a case of spoiled food? What if there was something more sinister at play? Turning back, I confronted Chef Sato, demanding answers. But as I looked into his eyes, I saw only emptiness of void devoid of humanity. In that moment, I realized the horrifying truth. Chef Sato's creations were not meant to be savored, but to devour. As I stumbled out into the cool night air, I knew that I had narrowly escaped a fate worse than death. But as I glanced back at the restaurant, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had only scratched the surface of Chef Sato's sinister secrets. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows, a young woman, her eyes wide with terror. She grabbed my arm her fingers trembling as she whispered urgently. You have to leave this town. It's not just Chef Sato, there are others, they're all part of it. Before I could respond, she disappeared into the darkness, leaving me shaken and bewildered. As I stood there, contemplating her words, a chill ran down my spine. What had I stumbled upon in Seabrook, and could I ever truly escape the web of darkness that seemed to engulf the town?